while the Monday injury report for the Miami Dolphins and Baltimore Ravens was based on an estimation because both teams conducted walkthroughs, there was some good news of sorts for Tua Tungavailoa. Just like last week, he was listed as questionable because of the finger he sustained during the Week 8 game at Buffalo, but he no longer was listed with his rib injury. The one player who was listed as not participating was center Greg Mance, who head coach Brian Flores said earlier Monday was not likely to play against Baltimore. Linebacker Jerome Baker, knee, safety Brandon Jones, ankle, and defensive back Elijah Campbell, toe, all were listed as limited participants. Sealer reflects on time with Ravens. A little less than two years after he joined the Dolphins off waivers, defensive lineman Zach Sealer will be facing his former team for the first time Thursday night. Sealer was an unproven young player from Ferris State when he joined the Dolphins after starting his career with Baltimore, but has developed into a very solid defensive lineman. I'm thankful for all my time there, Sealer said Monday. I'm thankful for the opportunity they gave me. Learned a lot while I was there, but I'm more thankful for Miami and what I've been able to do here and what they've done for me in teaching me, coaching me and grooming me into the player I am today. Baker flashes offensive skills. In his return to the lineup after missing the Buffalo game, linebacker Jerome Baker recorded his third career interception. The play featured a lot of luck and some great awareness from Baker, who re-established himself in the field of play after stepping out of bounds and then cradled the ball with his toes right next to the sideline after Tyrod Taylor's ill-fated decision to try to throw the ball away. I don't remember exactly the call or anything but he was rolling out or whatever and was going to the sideline, Baker said. I kind of relaxed and was like, he's going to throw it away. I could tell he was throwing it away but it wasn't far enough out of bounds. I was like, oh snap, it's really coming to me. So I got my feet in, caught it and the rest is history. It's definitely a free one and I'll take all of those. Jones Leary of Lamar. Second year safety Brandon Jones has had great success at times this season blitzing quarterbacks, but he has yet to face anybody as quick and fast as Lamar Jackson. Jones understands very well the balance between going all out after Jackson on Thursday night and letting Jackson escape out of the pocket. The biggest thing is just going to be to keep contain, Jones said. A guy like that, he's a playmaker obviously with his feet. It's going to be hard. He's fast. He puts people on skates 24-7. Hopefully I'm not in that position where he puts me on skates and I'm on ESPN Top 10 for getting shook. I think the biggest thing is to just keep contain and play our brand of football. That boy is filthy with it. It's going to be tough obviously. We're for sure going to have our hands full, like I said, just with his playmaking ability. Williams watch. After being inactive the past two weeks, Preston Williams will be back in the lineup against Baltimore on Thursday night. That's according to head coach Brian Flores, who said Williams being inactive against Houston wasn't for disciplinary reasons as it was against Buffalo the previous week, even though Williams was left out of the lineup in favor of Kirk Merritt, who was elevated from the practice squad. There's a lot that goes into it as far as things that happen at practice, happen within the building, Flores said. We just felt like we wanted to give Kirk, we wanted to elevate him for a number of reasons, the kicking game, offensively. He practiced well last week. That was why he was up. Practice squad status. Speaking of merit, he and linebacker Vince Beagle reverted to the practice squad Monday after both getting their second allotted non-COVID-related elevation.